and the rest of this video, all the slides are going to, to kind of present you with uh, a problem and a specific sort of uh, what I would call opening strategy, kind of a, a way to begin the problem. Um, now this one maybe is, is more obvious than the rest. Uh, again, as we finished with the, that first matching set, um, there are only one set of identities that have that, the, the negative angle. And there's only one set of identities that have this, this pi over 2 minus x expression. So, so it should be quite obvious maybe where to go, or at least where to begin this particular problem. Uh, if you look on your even odd identities, cotangent of negative x, this thing right here, this guy, is equal to negative cotangent x. And the cotangent of pi over 2 minus x, um, this guy right here, is equal to the tangent of x. And they are multiplied together. So we have negative cotangent x times tangent x. Well, what can we do with that? Um, there's a lot of things we could do with it. Uh, there's maybe three or four different ways we could go to get to either 1 or negative 1. I'll, I'll show you one of them. Um, from the, the quotient identities, cotangent is equal to cosine x over sine x. Tangent is equal to sine x over cosine x. Uh, a little bit of reducing. Cosine divided by cosine is 1. Sine divided by sine is 1. So the result is negative 1. In this next example, I'd like to show you one of probably the most well-used um, necessary strategies to to solve these trig identities, and that is how do we combine two fractions with unlike denominators? Okay, think like how would you add one half plus one third? Well, that's kind of what we're going to do here, except the denominators uh, uh, involve these trig functions. Well, so if I want to combine these two fractions into one fraction, uh, the the common denominator is the product of my two denominators. So one minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. The numerator, let's see, this denominator we know from experience goes over here. This denominator will go over here multiplying, so we have 1 times 1 plus sine, which is just 1 plus sine x. Plus, between the fractions, this denominator times this numerator will give us just 1 minus sine x. So what can we do with that? Um, in the numerator, if I collect like terms, the 1 plus 1 makes 2. Sine x minus sine x, well, those cancel out. In the denominator, uh, notice this is just a binomial times a binomial. You could think to yourself this is like a FOIL problem. Uh, when we FOIL, we do first, outside, inside, last. And so let's go ahead and just do all those steps. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times sine is sine. Negative sine times 1 is negative sine. Negative sine times sine is negative sine squared. And what can we do here? Sine minus sine goes away. So we have 2 divided by 1 minus sine squared. So let's see, can, can we do any more simplifying to that? Can we, can we take it anywhere else? Um, so I'm going to bring this up here so we can see. 2 divided by 1 minus sine squared. Well, that's a Pythagorean equivalent of cosine squared. All right? Let me, uh, let me show that. Uh, just so you believe me here, if I add my original sine squared minus or plus cosine squared x equals 1, if I were to take this sine squared and subtract it over to this side, 1 minus sine squared would be cosine squared. So that's, a, that's an okay substitution. 
Well, um, I've got this division by cosine. Uh, generally, the expression would be considered more simplified if it's not written as a fraction. So the reciprocal of cosine is secant. That's probably about as simplified as we're going to make this expression look. Uh, and certainly you'd probably agree that this is simpler looking than this. Uh, but again, the, the opening move, the thing that gave us something to do, gave us the foil, gave us the like terms, gave us the Pythagorean identity, gave us the reciprocal identity, the, the thing that got us going was to combine these two fractions to make a common denominator. Another opening strategy when um, proving trig identities, which is, uh, again, this, that's where we're going in this first couple lessons of this chapter, the, these proofs, is to, to use some strategies that we have from, from algebra to simplify, to rewrite expressions, and, and one is factoring. Um, you know, for example, if I were to give you, like, uh, maybe x squared plus 5x plus 4, and the directions were to factor it, then we would know that that's uh, two binomials, x plus 4 and x plus 1. So we're going to apply our knowledge of factoring, how we factor trinomials, um, to trinomials that involve trig functions. And the similarities are, are all there. They, for example, I see uh, x squared well, x squared has just been replaced with cosine squared. You know, so the first term is a squared term. The first term here is a squared term. Um, so, so the similarities, they begin kind of right there. If I were to, to try and factor this, well, so how did we do it over here? It was the first step of our FOIL, x times x gives x squared. Well, what times what gives cosine squared? And the answer would be cosine. Cosine times cosine would give cosine squared. Well then, how did we finish this? We wanted two numbers here that multiplied to the 4 and added to the 5. And it completed our factoring. Same thing here. Can we come up with two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2? And certainly we can. It would be positive 1 and positive 1. Uh, since the binomials are the same, we could, of course, write it as cosine x plus 1 squared. So there you go. There's a, an introduction into um, using factoring, using something that we have done and, and, and been doing for a lot of years, uh, dating back to like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, uh, pre-calculus, um, just factoring of trinomials. We can extend that knowledge base to trig expressions. The last of these, uh, what I would call kind of opening strategies that I want to discuss uh, in this video is one in which we can rationalize the denominator of a fraction. Um, it's another example that we're kind of stealing from algebra, really. Uh, for example, you know, an algebra example. If I were to give you like 3 divided by 1 plus the square root of 2, and I asked you to rationalize the denominator, well, well, seeing a binomial, we'd all know to, to rationalize this by multiplying the numerator by the conjugate pair, 1 minus square root of 2. You know, we know why we do that too, because we know that, you know, when we go to foil the denominator, we know that the outside product and the inside product, well, they cancel out every time, and so the, the square root ends up being gone in the denominator. That's kind of the, the objective there is to, to remove that square root from the denominator. Well, the same sort of thing, believe it or not, kind of works here too. If I see this denominator that has two terms in it, this same rationalizing trick will work to simplify this. So I'm going to begin this by multiplying by the conjugate pair 1 minus cosine x. Okay. 
uh, in the numerator you could do one of two things you could distribute sine squared to each term or you could just leave the sine squared in front and experience in doing identities tells me to just leave it in front and you'll gain that same experience too here over time uh, in the denominator of this fraction we have two binomials so just like we would here we're going to foil the denominator together um, one times one is one one times negative cosine is negative cosine cosine times one is positive cosine cosine times negative cosine is negative cosine squared okay the like terms make these cancel out so I've got then sine squared x times one minus cosine in the numerator divided by one minus cosine squared in the denominator now one minus cosine squared is a Pythagorean equivalent of sine squared well look what's happened in the process of using this conjugate pair foiling and losing some like terms there uh, reducing these two terms with the Pythagorean identity to one term look what we've created <clears throat> an opportunity to reduce and simplify this fraction even further we are left with one minus cosine x. Um, so there you go, there's <clears throat> just another strategy to, to kind of begin a problem, uh, to begin simplifying an expression. We can sometimes rationalize the denominator of a fraction.